Online research um, to try and get an idea of the different UN agencies, and there are a lot of them, and uh, what if any in innovation or kind of experimentation they have been doing uh, related to blockchain. So after um, traversing the vast and somewhat treacherous landscape of Google and UN uh, websites, I was able to find that at least 15 UN entities have been carrying out their own blockchain initiatives. Now, this was just what I have been able to get off of publications from either, you know, interviews um, or UN reports themselves. There could be others. This is just what I was able to obtain for now. Now, here is a quick um, summary table. Now, I tried to group them into at least three different categories, which is one, which is uh, the projects, either in proof of concept or scale up phase, events and workshops, and then publications and investments. Now, please let me explain that this, just because an agency is in over here over, or over there does not mean that that is ex strictly what they have done in terms of blockchain. This is just in pertaining to what I will be talking about, some things that they have done. Just like um, WFP and uh, UNICEF, they have done almost you know everything in regards to their own projects as well as publications and workshops. Okay, so first we're going to start with UNDP, uh, who have been looking into a blockchain as obviously as a possible alternative to financing. You're going to see that pop up a lot. Um, but they have also been, uh, ish, uh, I'm sorry, they have also been looking at it as a possibility to really keep track of assets. So something like UN vehicles, which are all over the world, could easily be um, monitored and everyone can see where everything is all at once using a blockchain. Next we have World Food Program, which I, I honestly don't even have to say anything. You've already heard the amazing presentation and their projects, which, are, which is currently in the scale-up phase. Um, and they are looking into even more amazing applications of blockchain, including digital IDs and supply chain because the blockchain is not, cannot just be used for uh, financing and, and cash transfers, but also the use of transferring of data and monitoring of assets. And next we have the UNCTAD. They currently have a blockchain application in the works known as E-Trade for All, which would make it possible for people around the world who may not have, you know, um, the ability to get as many resources to start their own online businesses. It would be based off of Estonia's e-residency application, which was a um, blockchain-backed data healthcare data management application. And next, we are going to move into events and workshops, and we start with UN Women, who will actually be presenting later today. So I'm just going to kind of jump in on some of the stuff that they've been doing. They actually recently partnered with Innovation Norway and held a hackathon, to, uh, pr and which produced several actually decentralized applications using blockchain, and um, many of them actually focusing on using blockchain as and cryptocurrency as a means for women in um, many countries to really have control over their own financial independence and businesses. All right, and next we have UNICRI. Sorry. And oh, I apologize. Thank you very much. <laughs> They recently held a, uh, a course exploring security concerns of, uh, concerns of not only blockchain, but other emerging technologies as well, such as AI, robotics, uh, you know, anything else that has been coming out recently. Um, because just with any technology, especially as fast as it is moving, though it does produce many amazing um, areas of, that we can, uh, you know, I'm sorry, uh, that we, can uh, t like can be very uh, helpful. It also does open up the risk of security concerns that we may not be con really aware of just yet. Next, we have ITU, which um, it was actually just mentioned not too long uh, recently that they will be holding a uh, 
training and course on blockchain technology and considering things like if it should be used as a, a new security standard um, and also opening, opening up the discussions to policy as well because it is not owned by one country, it would be international. There's just a lot of, there's no regulations thus far regarding cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. Next we have UNDESA. Um, they were involved in a, putting together a competitive project actually known as the REMTECH Awards, which brought in participants from all over the world. And one of the main themes was actually using blockchain technology in regards to the remittance industry. Now we have UNECE. They uh, published a white paper on block concerning blockchain and also held many conferences to help try and clarify the technology and to talk about the possible applications of the blockchain. And they also, not surprisingly, looked into the use of blockchain in facilitation of trade. And next we have the UNODC. Um, together with a blockchain analysis company called Chainalysis, they actually developed and launched a training that uh, on tracing Bitcoin, um, and they viewed it as very important in regards to po uh, financial investigations. Now, you know, it used to be you can do your own kind of forensics and, um, auditing and things like that when it comes to finances, but now that we're moving more into tech, uh, the cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, they definitely need to look into the best way to trace it and try to trace back to certain people. All right, we're gonna transition now into the publishings. Uh, UNEP actually published a report discussing blockchain technology as a means to enable sustainable development, as well as reducing overhead costs, which uh, we had discussed about too with um, just cutting out the middleman. And next we have UNOPS, who they they really came came in and pulled together all the different UN agency uh, entities that have been working on their own little projects with blockchain, and pulled just pull them all together to start kind of sharing information, and working together, and they released a request for information. Now I do not have a picture, but you can just look at the gentleman right over there sitting. Uh, he was very, very much responsible for this initiative. <coughs> Next, we have ECLAC, ECLAC, um, and they're, they published a paper discussing their views on blockchain. They do see it as a possible solution for uh, issues with like bank, uh, bank de-risking and things like that. Uh, at the same time, they did uh, did talk about how they felt like the technology was still too new and undeveloped for them to currently use as a solution. Next, we have the UNRISD, and they were looking into blockchain and Bitcoin as a, as a uh, also as a currency for possible remittances, and saw it also as a potential for possibly merchants in like, all over the world to take part in international commerce. Next, we have OSHA, and they released a paper in which they talked about blockchain in multiple aspects, not not just with financial transactions, but also data as well, whether it be identification data, other types of information on, on assets. And they also, of course, linked in many humanitarian issues that could um, be made, uh, I'm sorry, that the way that blockchain could be helpful in many humanitarian issues, whether it be uh, donor financing, similar, I guess, to, to also grants, um, monitoring supply chains, and also just the gathering and protection of data. All right, and last but certainly not least, we have UNICEF, which has been also doing a lot when it comes to blockchain. They currently have an uh, innovation fund that is up to $11.2 million and have been funding projects that are in regards to many different emerging technologies, but blockchain being one of them, and they have expressed that they definitely want to expand upon 
um, blockchain app uh, applications and funding. They have been dabbling in their own application like prototypes as well. And there is actually going to be a speaker from UNICEF who will be able to really do their initiatives more justice than I possibly could. Um, so like I said, this was just a very, very high overview of what I was able to read and obtain. Um, but it definitely have been seeing a lot of amazing work and initiatives from so many different agencies. So I, I'd love to, if, if there has been anything that I have possibly missed or any um, UN agencies, uh, entities I call them, that have been doing their own blockchain projects that there was nothing published about or I may have missed it, I would love to hear about them very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.